What is good? We're back. And we have Cracks. some skyrocketing rookies for you. What would the first week of football be not to be talking about some rookies on the Dynasty Fantasy Football Show? We got Big Co, Remote. We got Jay Wayne in the house on the ones and twos. That's your boy Casey. We're ready to roll. Let's jump right into these rookies. Little rookie kind of report for your pleasure here. Uh, Xavier Worthy was the first one we got to see, and it didn't disappoint. One carry, 21 yards, a touchdown, three targets, two receptions, 47 yards, and a touchdown. Now, we're going to see Xavier Worthy like this every single week doing this kind of stuff. Most likely not, right? But nevertheless, he wasn't just out there. Just People weren't just picking him up and throwing him uh, off the field, as, a, as if some people suggested might happen. Uh, so. <laughs> throwing him off the throw him right out of the game yeah. get out of here <laughs> like you know <laughs> little nes uh ninja turtles game still can happen it's it still can happen but uh, just you know the fact that he got out there he played well he, he fit into the offense they schemed him some touches will he have two touchdowns every week no next week could he could he be a goose egg and, and not have a whole lot going on sure uh but Pretty soon, you know, we're going to be five, six weeks into the season and you're going to see Xavier Worthy, Hollywood Brown, Rashi Rice and, and Kittle out there. And this is going to be one Kelsey. hell of an offense. For sure. And Andy Reid doesn't usually play as rookies anyway. Right. Put him right on the fast track. Mahomes said, I don't want to play dink and dunk all year like we did last year. I want to have it have it, you know, open up. And that's just what happened. I mean, they got. Uh, worthy running around and then Rasheed Rice is catching these balls right across the middle then you're not you're not just like compacted like they were last year and that's that's what the Chiefs wanted that's what they got right without and, Hollywood Brown and the Brown and the and the, the Bills elected not to take Xavier Worthy and the Chiefs were like you're gonna pay for that one bub that's not gonna be great for you yeah like, <laughs> um and we'll get to that in just a second. But, I, you know, Xavier Worthy w was a favorite of mine. So, of course, I'm excited about this. If he, if he, if he wasn't, you're, you're, you're going to be excited next week when it's not nearly as good. And you can tell us you told you so. Uh, but right. you, know, you paid a first for Xavier Worthy. Right now, if somebody offered you two firsts, knowing what you know about Xavier Worthy, would you trade him? I don't want your too late first for him. If you can do something for me that's, that, you know, it's all contextual with these first round draft pick, you know, right. we'll hypotheticals. Just two random firsts. Um, but it, it, if it's completely random, then you know. So, two, one two point six is yeah, super sure. flex. We'll, set, we'll call it super flex. flex. That makes him way more valuable. You know, it's hard to say yes to that because he's so much fun, mm -hmm. and you're probably going to regret it. And two quarterback, I flip into a random. One of them could be the one two. If I get stuck in the in the Roulette ball lands on 11 and 12 back to back, and I got the 111 and the 112. Even in Superflex, I'm not going to be too happy. But I yeah. get, if you're literally just saying I'm flipping a coin on and and tossing it over there, and, and these 12 cups, and one of them could be the one three, and one of them could be the one five. I I could do that all day, but it would be uh it'd be a gamble, that's for sure. Yeah, I haven't seen two firsts on this Dynasty Daddy Trades database. I see uh first and a second with 27 i mean get out of here with the 27 i was in draft and could have gotten a first and a second for the pick of xavier worthy mm. so i was thinking maybe i could go back to the guys offer him two first see if i could get it and he'd give mm. me give me the two first so that's where that <laughs> that's where that came from and i'm thinking about it you know i'm thinking about it just just grab my two and we already know 2025 class great just yeah, we're in the. I mean, this, <laughs> this is part of the cycle. This is where we're at. It's better the best, than the This is the best class we've ever seen. You know. Yeah, well, we are going to be hitting you guys with some uh, with some 2025 rookie class uh, oh, stuff. So make sure you like, pleasure. subscribe, and uh, look out for that. Yeah, and of course we just wrapped up Sunday night show nine o'clock p.m. every Sunday on the Patreon, the five dollar holler. You get a live stream of that. So make sure you come check that out for you. Extra show every week. Booyah, beer, 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 beer. boy. All right, Pico, what you got? <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, who's next on the list? Keon Coleman? All right, Keon Coleman. The, the, you know, they could have had Xavier Worthy. They settled for Keon Coleman. And all Keon Coleman, you know, Keon Coleman, not my favorite, right? Was risky. Didn't didn't love it. Uh, was was worried about it. I'll take him. I'm not, not going to take him. Uh, there has, has to be, you know, the tier that I liked before him has to be gone, right? Um, the lads and the Brian Thomases, um, the Bensons even. 
uh, need to be gone. And then I was fine with the Keon Leggett kind of Pearsall, A.D. Mitchell tier. And I'll take Keon there, which is about value. But what we saw is 23% target share for Keon Coleman here. And we yeah. won as a, as a bill. We saw five targets, four receptions, and 51 yards. Uh, led the team in targets, obviously, with that. You know, when, if you're leading the team in target share, um, you're leading the team. Um, well, only 23 targets because they're trying to run the ball. Cardinals, you know, had some time of possession there as well. The only 23 targets. And then, of course, you know, Josh Allen had to run it himself at the end of the game a bunch of times to to be able to pull off the victory. But five targets doesn't sound like a lot. Leading the team in targets sounds like a lot more than five. Good that it's a, a priority for them. They said it was going to be. And the beat writer said, He's been out there all the time, and then when they got in there and played the starters in the uh, off in the preseason, he was in there on every snap with the starters and even on, in two wide receiver set, sets. So it's been no training wheels for the rookie. He's the wide receiver one, yeah, and he's on the field, and and I'm and I'm happy about that. I love that for my Keon Coleman shares because I got a handful. Yeah, so you got twenty one point seven on Fantasy Pros date or Sandy Fantasy Points date. I'm looking at uh, Fantasy Life's. Uh, from Dwayne McFarlane and, and and those fellows over there, so the heat they had him at twenty three percent, that to twenty one point seven. So um, pay a lot more for that one. So I'll go with that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Keon Coleman, you know, great great stuff over there with with the fantasy points. If if you uh, are looking for a all encompassing uh, data suite, they got you covered. They, they're putting some some good good stuff up over oh, there. Oh, the market shares and uh, but. Yeah, you got to be excited about Keon, and there's not, you know, we're, that was that was some of the allure of going there. It was like, hey, that that wiped off some of the stink of like, there are some red flags here, but we just landed in a landing spot where, hey, we could really, really soak up a lot of targets. Yeah, well, talked about it with Lamar on the other show, Lamar Jackson, Rashad Bateman, and the fact that they don't mesh well together, and how Lamar and Zay Flowers mesh well together. Supposedly, the little birdie says that Josh Allen wanted Keon Coleman mm-hmm. because Josh Allen isn't. He gets a lot of respect and he earns every bit of it, but he is not a three step drop, bang, the balls out kind of guy. They did, you know, last year, into the year before that, they had a lot of five wide. He takes a snap and the ball's out right away and then defenses adjust so they change things up. Like, but Josh Allen, his, he's at his best mid structure, out of structure. Yeah, mid-structure. you know, that's his bet. That's his bet. You know, he, Full structure is not his best. Can he do it? Yes. And he can he stand in the pocket and be a large man and deliver a rocket? Yes. But when he's moving around just a little bit, because he can take off and he's not 180 pounds and he's fast and he's tough and he doesn't mind getting hit, all that fun stuff. So mid mid structure, kind of out of structure is his best kind of offense yeah. against the defense, if you will. That's that's when he stresses you the most. Keon Coleman out there reacting to him and being a big body is kind of what he said he needed. Yeah. So don't get me wrong. I'm sure at some point in time, the bills, I'm sure definitely last Thursday night, all the bills team, probably everybody, but it's, but the guys on the team, which, and maybe some of those guys, which they had worthy instead of Keon Coleman. Mm-hmm. But th- this is what Josh Allen said he wanted. And maybe he didn't know enough about worthy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Josh Allen, that that Enrique Iglesias, if you will, you know, wants to be your hero. You had to pay more for, <laughs> for worthy, though, right? Yeah, a little bit. They uh, the Bills traded. Yeah, could have had him. Um, they traded back with the Chiefs there. Mm. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to Patreon.com/slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel, or hit your boys with the five dollar holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. So Brian Thomas coming and in here, we'll- Jacksonville, switching gears, uh, tied his team high and targets four reception, forty seven yards, one touchdown uh, for old uh, Brian Thomas there coming out of LSU, tied in in uh, team leading target share as well. So some rookies out here. Uh, obviously Xavier Worthy wasn't because Rashi Rice is you know now Rashi St Brown. Some rookies out here leading teams in target share, um, and Brian Thomas was one of them. Brian Thomas could have had an even bigger day. Jalen Ramsey interfering, getting him down to the goal line where ET converts, uh, where he really could have caught the the bat, the ball that he got interfered with. Um, had Ramsey hung up in the air, Ramsey interfered. Uh, Ramsey does not dance at the party. Shout out to Nacho. <laughs> Shout out to Nacho Libre. Underrated movie. Well. It's not called it's not called skyrocketing rookies for nothing. So Brian Thomas is you know 
did everything he needed to do, looked great doing it without the Ramsey, you know, foul. Maybe that's a bigger day. But the I think the biggest part of that in a whole for Brian Thomas and the Jags, like Trevor was top five in a dot. So and that was in a game where they were winning. That whole first quarter they were crushing the the Dolphins. So it's not like when yeah. a lot of times in the NFL. If the team, the team, the top couple teams in a dot were the ones that got down by 20 because they were chucking it all over the place. Now, that's not going to be the case for the Colts. They're going to lead. They're going to be in the top of the a dot every game this year. See rocket launcher that's on Anthony Richardson's shoulder. <laughs> yeah, but the the Jags and Tre- they've been telling you about that vertical passing game all off season, And mm-hmm. that's exactly what happened. And it did cost Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram their targets, but their top five in a dot at Top five in the average, you know, in intended air yards and in and, and, and a game where they were winning, not down by 20, shows you that everything that they were trying to tell you was going to happen was their focus. That's why we like Trevor on the come up. That's why Trevor was a value. That's why Trevor for MVP uh, was the hot take coming right. around here. Um, and he and he played extremely well in the first half and he didn't play bad. The, the Jaguars upper management and a fumble going into the end zone, which was Jack bad luck. And it really Miami just had no deep. business winning that game. That's what I'm saying. It was a great defensive play to knock the ball out, go for AT. And, you know, sometimes do I don't know team. why that punts and I don't know why punts and field goals are all of a sudden the enemy of a, of an <laughs> offensive coordinator <laughs> or head coach. Now, you know, sometimes just punting and is the best play. Yeah. Sometimes to kick in the field goal is the way to go. So the Jags lost the game. Matt, the narrative on Jacksonville and freaking Trevor Lawrence, if they get that W, they go into Miami and they knock them off. Remember last year how good that, you know, that's what we would have been talking about. Remember how good they were before Trevor got hurt last right. year? They were leading a division, yada, yada, yada. All that would have been up in the air right now, but they lost. Yeah. And it's not Trevor's fault. It Could he have done more to help? I'm sure. But, uh, you know, when the coach is making decisions like that and the running back's fumbling going into the end zone, it's not his fault they lost. No. And so, but uh, all that being said, stock up Brian Thomas. The che- the, the Jags want to throw it downfield. Trevor's Lawrence's, like, highest ratings are on t- – uh, he leads the league in yards, so, you know, yeah. passes over 20 yards. So that's what he does well. That's what the Jags want to do. And now they got weapons to do that. Stock up Brian Thomas. Yeah, I thought we, we talked about it all offseason. Brian Thomas and Gabe Davis better fits for what this offense was trying to do last year. Calvin Ridley, great player. Didn't use him right. Brian Thomas and right. Gabe Davis give you those options. Um, and then Kirk and Ingram just crushing the middle of the field. I mean, I think we'll, you know, we'll see we'll see more than 17 points out of the Jaguars week in and week out. But Brian Thomas, great fit there. And and I, you know, I thought I thought the Jags played well enough to win that game and should have won that game. And and but uh, you know, unfortunately. Did not. How about uh, you know Brian Thomas and Rashad Tank. White or Saquon? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Tank Dell or Brian Thomas? That's got to be. Oh man, coming. that's a that's a tough question. That's yeah, that's that's a very tough question because I'm a Tank Dell guy. Today, today, it, it, today it's Brian Thomas, uh, but tomorrow it's Tank Dell. Mm. Well, you know, we, we live to fight again. Pocket. Come on, Tank Dell. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, same concept. Uh, I'm a big Brian Thomas guy, but I'm a bi- I'm a bigger I'm a bigger Tank Dell guy. So that's a tough question. I get you gotta. Yeah. Oof. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's keep Man, it moving. That's tough. Brock Bowers screaming yep. up the charts here. Already was real high. People had some doubts. I was concerned about how they were going to use him. Right. That's all I wanted to know. And and we saw a smidgen in the preseason, and then the usage this week, and how they were moving him around and doing what they were doing with him. I thought was excellent. Targets team high with eight. The target percentage from from fantasy life, which I'm sure will be slightly different from what Jason's pulling up right now, but the quick one, Why 23 are you looking at different things. I'm just looking at this because I can look at it right now and see what the Raiders okay, all were. Got gotcha. you. Um, so he was at 23 percent here. Uh, next highest wide receiver on this apparatus, 19 percent. So Brock Bowers up there, 24, 24 percent, maybe even better, even better. So we'll use that one even better. Um, this one's more less <laughs> devastating to my case. Yeah. Brock Bowers, six for 58. So you got to love that. Uh, you know, they, they did mix it around a little bit. Jacoby had 60 yards. I of think, course he did. Uh, Devontae Adams had right around 60 yards and Brock Bowers is right around 60 yards. So, you know, the, the quarterback play is going to be good enough, but it's probably going to hold this team back from being, you know, elite on the on the fantasy side of things. If, if they're spreading it around to the three guys that much. Right. Uh, but you gotta love it yeah. for for yeah. what you're seeing with Brock Bowers and and you know we we did a trade in the off season and traded Brock Bowers essentially for 
uh, Trey McBride. Um, and because we were scared of how, what, you know, we knew what Trey McBride was and we saw what the target share was just didn't work out for, for Trey McBride still and we knew the quarterback situation. And, and I still like it, but this puts the, a little bit of ease to Brock Bowers and, and the assets of Brock that I do have. No apprehension to Brock Bowers all off season long, took every chance I could to scoop him up. Still taking Trey McBride over him for sure. You know, and, and they're not going to play a team like the Chargers every week that the Chargers want to pound the rock and run the clock down as fast as possible. Uh, you know, that's what the Raiders want to do. So when you get two teams that want to do that, to get eight targets and, you know, convert six for 58 on a on a game where these guys are just cracking helmets. And, you know, when you, when you play against Harbaugh's Chargers now, uh, Jim Harbaugh, not John, when you play against these Chargers, they're... They're coming at you. They're handing it to J.K. Dobbins, and they're running behind an offensive line. So the clock moves. So good for Brock Bowers, extremely good for Brock Bowers to be able to even get eight, you know, eight targets in a game like that where the clock essentially really never stopped. Yeah, yeah. And if you're not, li if you're listening on the podcast, Jason's been doing a great job of while we're talking, pulling up all the trades from Dynasty Daddy. Great website. If you're not checking that out, make sure you do that. Nice sponsor of the pod. Be sure to uh, keep it locked and loaded. Like, subscribe, comment below. All that jazz. Listen on the pod. If you're if you're listening on the pod, you might as well hit the five star review. Mm. Um, we got some Brock Bowers trades up here. Brock Bowers, Terry McLaurin, Khalil Shakir, or Sam Laporta. Still rolling with Sam Laporta there. Full point PPR. No premium. What did Brock Bowers and who? McLaurin Brock and Bowers Shakir. And who? Two quarterback. No premium. No premium. Yeah, I'll stay with Sam Laporta. In a, in a premium scenario, the guys that's getting most targets is probably going to win out. And no premiums, Laporta, the Lions are going to get to the red zone more often and they're going to get more touchdowns. They're going to throw for probably twice as many touchdowns than the Raiders will this year. Obviously, it's Dynasty, but there's no quarterback in sight, especially since Dak just re-signed with the Cowboys. The Raiders are like, all right, what are we going to do now? So I'm definitely keeping Laporta there. You'd probably have to add a decent chunk there. Um, to get me to jump ship yeah. uh, with I'm, no I'm not, premium. I'm not jumping off any of the elite tight ends to go down to Brock, like the, the top three or four right now, just yet to go to Brock Bowers, but he's he's ascending up into that territory. All right. Oh, uh, he's on his way there. Sure. He's on his way there. Sure. Keon, he's skyrocketing riser. I mean, what are we talking about here? Um, he's not on the show for nothing. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Keon Coleman and Bo Nix, two quarterback, or Brock Bowers and Luke McCaffrey. No premium. Hmm. Should have talked about Bo Nix before they played the Seahawks. <laughs> Bo Nix didn't look too good. Risers today. He's not on this list. We, he's he's on this going the other way list. Yeah. All right. Let's keep it rolling. All right. Uh, so Xavier Leggett once again theme of the night. Skyrocketing rookies leading their team in targets. Uh, Xavier Leggett seven targets, four receptions, thirty five yards, zero touchdowns. Not a lot of touchdowns from the rookies here. Brian Thomas got one. <laughs> Xavier got not a lot of points for the for the Panthers, dude. Not a lot of points for the Panthers, and I do think him leading the team in targets. I do believe I saw uh, one of the guys from Fantasy Points Data tweet out that uh, that that target share came after Deontay Johnson was benched because they were getting shelled. Right. So, but still good to see Xavier to get out there getting some work in, and obviously nothing good went for the Panthers, but Leggett out there. We like Leggett. He he's capable of winning on an NFL field and I think he's going to be end up being just fine if you know if they can just get the wheels turning a little more positive and not be down 30 at half you know with the damn quickness here um you know this needs I don't to think that's really, asking too much right right that's that's not asking a terrible I don't know it's asking a lot of the Panthers these days it might be it might be uh so not going to spend a whole lot of time they were in a dome they're not used to that Drink. Right. Uh, well, you know, good, good defensive uh, line, good uh, defensive coordinator. And if Dennis Allen is nothing, he can coach a defense. Still a dickhead, but can coach a defense. But uh, yeah, we can keep it moving from Xavier Leggett here. Uh, let's go over to my boy Lad here. Seven targets, five receptions, 39 yards, and a touchdown. Hmm. Hmm. Dominated, dominated team targets, too. Yeah, seven seven targets there. But, you know, shout out to Quentin Johnston. Was out there getting some work in, moving the sticks, getting some volume, catching a couple of balls. Saw a drop, but saw some catches. Uh, you know, so you know, don't give up hope just yet on, on QJ. I know everybody was completely out because there's no way he uh, a professional out there could figure out how to catch the ball. But, hey, you know, I don't know. He's Lad got McConkey, some work to do to figure out how to catch it. What's that? 
He's got some work to do to figure yeah. out how to catch well, it. It's he, not impossible, but it's he's, he needs he's to figure it out. He's figuring some, it out. He needs to find that old school stickum stuff that you got outlawed and just see if he can get away with it. <laughs> yeah, he's doing a lot of hand stretching, working out over there. But Lad <laughs> yeah. looked, I thought, looked really good out here. Uh, you know, obviously Herbert hasn't been around. Lad was a little banged up, uh, so you know you're getting a. a a version of the of the Chargers that you know by week eight, and and that's same for every team, but especially for the Chargers who didn't have you know these two guys working together for a long stretch, and even in the off season and leading up to the season, Lad missing a little time here and there, not a ton, and then Herbert missing obviously a big chunk of time. This this could be I I, I like Lad for this reason to just soak up PPR targets as long as he can stay healthy. You know the touchdown that he had, he put the guys on skates, just looks very capable out there. He's a great route runner. I felt like he was an excellent fit with what Jim Harbaugh wants to do and how they want to operate an offense. Going to be, I think, the default guy who just soaks up the targets. I'm trying to think of a good a good name for, you know, like the, like Crabtree would have been Harbaugh's guy back in San Fran mm. uh, a while mm. ago. Uh, but, but you know, can be out here and, and be an Edelman for Justin Herbert. And I, that, and Yeah, I, I mean, in PPR leagues, PPR leagues, that's, that's all we can ask for. Right. right. If you if you're going to go out there and all, I mean, it's a run first team again. So there's not going to be he's definitely not getting a 19 point 19 target game like, uh, you know, Cooper Cup did for the Rams. Like they're they're yet they're going to be. Yeah. So uh, but uh, but just fantastic. Like uh, week one, five for 40 and a touch. Keep it, you know, f- yeah. great. Great, like, and didn't get hurt. Right, we, Herbert, the, Herbert the, not hurt. Prop. Lad not hurt. Right, J.K. Dobbins not hurt. Good <laughs> yeah. for the Chargers. Keep it moving. Great for the Chargers. You know, it's just the problem with the dynasty value here is, is every time we talk about Lad right now, and he's going to have to move away from this, and hopefully we put him in the Keenan Allen discussion. Is like right now you can't talk about how good Lad is without saying, as long as he's playing and healthy. He's the best wide receiver on the field. Mm-hmm. Like we need to. It, so what we need to do is lad to not get hurt. So we can talk about him for how good he is without having to preface or quickly follow up whatever we said with as long as he's not hurt. Yeah. So let's not get hurt lad. Yeah. All right. We're going to uh, rattle off a couple more here. Obviously Marv didn't do what Marv things only non sky skyrocketing riser not to, uh, Really rise some more, but he was already he had already risen, uh, like Easter Sunday. He's he sure was, he was up there. Um, I was yeah, say, and everybody's yeah, seen every, Jesus. Every, everybody's already seen that that the wide open. Yeah, there's nobody around me. Touchdown that didn't get thrown. So it's not like he wasn't out there and could, he could have had another. You know, 12, 12 points on that play. Yeah, your your number one and number two draft pick were not good. I, and I don't think Marv wasn't good necessarily, just didn't get the targets. That'll change. Caleb Williams wasn't very good uh, in his debut. Everything just looked a little too fast for him. But don't be going and doing anything crazy because those two guys came out and cost you the week this week and being like, ah, you know, I need I need to get my value back on. The, I think both of them are going to be just fine. Don't do anything crazy. Yeah. Caleb, Caleb wasn't good. It didn't look, you know... He, the, the good thing about Caleb is, is he's not very flappable, but he did look like things were moving at a, you know, a 2% sped up pace or 1.5 podcast pace where things were just a little too yeah. fast for him. <laughs> yeah, right. Things were just a little too fast coming at him with live bullets. I think the Titans have a good defense. For sure. Um, and I think he caught some tip balls. Keenan could have helped him out with a little bit better Ugh. stat line there. Um, got Keenan the two-point conversion. One. It wasn't even a one-hand catch, so I don't know why I didn't get it. You <laughs> right. can't do the one-hand catch. So, but. Caleb, not skyrocketing either, but, again, a value was already good. Uh, neighbors had a good game, right? It wasn't outstanding. Seven targets, five receptions, 66. Not, not, you know, that was really good for the rest of the rookies that we read, but not where we not where we put in neighbors on the pedestal quite yet. Um, but, you know, still really solid. And, and we just we, we kind of knew what, what it was, right? This is going to probably be a bit of a mess. Right with the Giants here. Yeah, you know, a, a not flattering video going around of him in the locker room, but at the same time, you kind of know it what was that so is with him. You knew, you knew that. Hey, he tried. He he, he tried. He said, "I, he I don't know what's going on guy. back there." He didn't say like this guy my fucking job. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just doing my job. Let me tell you how bad it was. It was so bad they already had to put out a press release that Daniel Jones <laughs> will, in fact, <laughs> will start, start next start. week. 
Yeah. That's Can't how bad it was. Know. They were like, just so y'all don't need to be talking about it for the next three days, he will be the starter next week. That's how bad it was. Yeah. As bad as the uniforms were. I kind of like the I, – I didn't like the pants, but I like the jersey. The jersey was all right. Helmet was terrible. Couldn't tell what part was what. Kind of – I like the jersey. They looked like a hockey set. Well, hockey, uh, hockey yeah. gear there. Hockey sweater. I uh, kind of liked it. But, yeah, neighbors I, that isn't necessarily skyrocketing, but crush it. Jaden Daniels can't get out of here without giving him a little bit of love. You know, not operating from the pocket extremely well, but I believe he was fastest or second fastest time to throw in the league uh, with, like, I'm not going to quote the number, but he he was that which is not good. Um, that's not you know, it was he had to make quick decisions, but he was out there. He ran 16 carries for 88 yards. You don't want to see Jaden Daniels carrying it 16 times again. You sliding? It's probably not what you he, 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 down. He got blasted a few times. One time we got a personal foul. You don't want to be seeing that. He scored you two touchdowns, and this is the value of the running quarterback, right? Not a great right. day, you know, from from an X's and O's standpoint, and nothing for Scary Terry. Twenty eight PPR points still. was a bit of a bummer, but yeah, ran to win, got it done. You know, if you if you took yeah. Jaden Daniels, you're excited about it. Well, the problem is, he had five catches that went to wide receivers, and the completion he his his completion yardage air yards was zero. Yeah. So, like you said, he was the quickest to get the ball out in the league, but it was all checkdowns, quick bubble screens. Most of the damage that he did in those receiving in those yards that he that he racked up the 184 yards. Yuck. Most of those were, most of those were freaking Brian Robinson yeah. catching a ball that was thrown backwards to him or barely close enough to forward that they counted it as a pass and he ran with it. I'm yeah. not putting any. You know, right. This was. That this was your running quarterback fantasy Option. point scored. Right, right. This this was this is what he was gonna do. But one of the reasons why in the startup we couldn't take him at where he had to be bought for at that spot and the at, at the value of that pick of where he had to be taken is because you're not quite sure what right. he if he's Justin Fields or not. Well, right? and and, and so, you mentioned it when we were talking maybe last night or on the phone today that. You know, he went into the situation that Caleb Williams, that you expect Caleb Williams Perfect. to go to where it's not it's not good around you, right? The line's not good. Yeah, the yeah, defense yeah, yeah. isn't good. You know, you have an, some okay skill position players, but it's just, it's not a great situation around you. So you need to survive and not get your confidence rattled. It's uh, horrible. He does have Terry, he, he does have Terry McLaurin and he, you know, he does have Brian Robinson and a veteran Eckler to kind of keep the, you know, to, to like, hey guys, let's keep it moving here. But Right. He got drafted in what the spot the normal first overall pick gets drafted into. Everybody's been right. talking about how good of the spot that Caleb Williams got drafted into. Well, Jaden Daniels got drafted into the horrible franchise with no defense and a bummer for an offensive line. And they actually looked like he had weapons when he got drafted and then they just something wasn't working and they had to get rid of uh, what's his name that went to the Eagles. Dotson to the Eagles for peanuts. But you know, McLaurin is a team player and he's a Solid, solid veteran. So that's something to lean on. But yeah, he's in as far as the team goes, it's not great. Yeah. Uh, so they got the, the roster has got a lot of work to be done. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as him being in your start lineup every week right now, no problems involved. No. There's going to be plenty of Russians to go along with it. The floor rushing upside will be there. All right, let's uh, two more and we'll get out of here. Bucky Irving, nine carries, 62 yards, three targets, two receptions, 14 yards. They love him over there. The coach loves him. They've been talking about him all offseason. He's going to be getting more more and more carries as the season goes on. Um, I, I firmly believe in, in Bucky. He's not going to take over because Rashad White's very good and a great, great, great pass-catching running back. But Bucky Irving is going to have, you know, a startable role here in the not too distant future with the good Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know? Wow. Yeah. Uh, and, and then on top of it, well, the last one is, is Jalen McMillan here had a chance for another touchdown in this game, caught one, three targets, one reception, one touchdown, but Jalen McMillan already out there getting the run, looking the part, getting a few targets. God forbid anything happens to either one of those other Godwin or Evans Evans. Jalen McMillan looks like he's ready to step in there and 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 be a viable asset for you pretty quickly. And yeah, you know, dropped the ball that he he had to uh, he had the sideline. He mm -hmm. he stat line was about to look solid. He could have had two touchdowns. 
yeah, no, he he was great, and I and I like and and neither one of those guys are super young, uh, Evans and Godwin, and and which is why McMillan was getting some love there, and we just we just really liked him, so had a good day there. So, uh, Ad Mitchell could have had a bigger day as well if if um, Alec Pierce wasn't so good. Well, if <laughs> yeah, if if A Rich wouldn't have missed him by you know a few steps, and maybe he could have ran a little harder, keeping his head down for a second there. Uh, but well, and then the other one in the end zone. I mean, he he could have easily had a couple couple touchdowns. Yeah. So rookies just wanted to touch on them, get some thoughts on them, see where they're at, and of course, you know, got to hit on the skyrocketers. Of course, why wouldn't you? All right, we appreciate you. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Check us out on the uh, Patreon side of things. Five dollar hours, like we mentioned, we're doing a, a recap show nine o'clock uh, Eastern on. Sunday night. Sunday nights for the patrons live. You can come on there, talk with us, ask us some questions. We're just going to be recapping the action. Extra show every Or listen week. to it later. Or listen, or to, listen it to, later. to it later. Yeah, you got something to listen to on Monday as well. Hit us up on the free Discord as well. The $5 holler gets you the Discord. Uh, the, and there's premium channels on the Discord. we got lots of stuff going on over there. So uh, make sure you go check it out. And until next time, we'll catch you. we got Big Co over there. we got Jay Wayne over here. I'm Casey. We'll see you next time. Peace.